So my name's Catherine Thompson. I'm a consultant dermatologist. So what that means is I'm a doctor who specializes in seeing patients who have diseases of their skin. Um, so that might be people who've got rashes or even acne, or it might be people who've got skin cancers. I think a lot of people think about being a doctor as being, you have to be really good at science and be really clever. I like to think I'm a little bit clever, but, but no, maybe not as clever. But I think is most important is being able to talk to people, chat to patients, and really get a, a good relationship going with the patients that we see. I spend a lot of time in clinic, so it's a little bit like if you're going to see your GP, they'd be sitting in a room and the patients come in and see you. So we find out the story, it's all about storytelling. Patients tell us how they've had problems with their skin and what symptoms that they've experienced. And then we have a look at their skin and hopefully make some diagnoses and then work out ways to get them better. And then once a week I also do a surgical list, which means that I see patients with skin cancers who come and have those skin cancers cut out. So it's an operation which takes about half an hour. And we do the operation and the patients in my department, they just go home again on the same day. I'll tell you a little bit about how I get, got where I, I, I am at the moment. I, I actually went to Joseph Roundtree School, so one of the local comprehensives. I haven't moved very far, have I really? But um, at that time, nobody from my school had ever been to medical school. So it wasn't as straightforward as you might think. Um, and I decided that I wanted to be a doctor. I was looking at jobs that I could do. I wanted to do something where I could chat to people and make a difference and help people. I was good at sciences, so you know clearly there was that. But I, you know, I wasn't exceptional. It wasn't something at that time that I would necessarily have thought I could have done. Um, but I thought I'd give it a go. Worked very hard, and I managed to get the grades that I needed to go to medical school. And I wasn't necessarily encouraged to do it by the teachers at the time because nobody else had done it before, so there wasn't an expectation that it was going to be possible. So I did get those grades, I proved them all wrong, <laughs> and I went to Nottingham Medical School for five years. So in that time, I, you do general training, um, looking mainly book work, lots of lectures, seminars, similar to any other university course. And then the final two and a half years, you do a lot of clinical work. So you start going to wards, you start going to clinics and seeing patients. Um, and at that stage, you have your degree. You are a doctor, so you can start calling yourself a doctor. But beyond that, things nowadays are slightly different from when I came through, but you have a foundation um, training two years. So it's another two years, but you're actually working. You are a doctor and you get paid, which is obviously important. Um, and in that two years, you'll uh, rotate between different specialties, get to le learn the basics. And then after that time, you would generally do some further exams. So you have to be OK about taking exams and reading and learning. Um, and then you move into a more specific training, and that's when you start doing the, the dermatology, the skin stuff. And that's a further four years. Halfway through that, you then have more exams. And as I say, you have to not mind that. And at that point, after that four years, you are then a consultant. So I reached that point at the very old age of 31, okay? Um, and then I've been a consultant now for 19 years, so quite a long time. And you carry on learning, that doesn't stop. So I keep going on courses, I keep reading the books, um, and that's where I am. Um, but I think it's, it's wrong that it's all about the academic, and I think that's what a lot of people get wrong about being a doctor. That if you are good with people and you're a good communicator, I actually think that's probably more important and you'll find it much easier to be a doctor than somebody who is very academic, good at reading, gets top marks in the exams, but actually struggles to talk to people. So being a good communicator, I think that's important for my job.